not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our intro for this day is found printed within your bulletin. It's from Isaiah 62 and Psalm 8. We proclaim our intro responsibly. Say to the daughter of Zion, Surely your salvation is coming. The Lord will cause his goodness, his glorious voice to be heard. And gladness of heart. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel. You who lead Joseph like a flock. You who dwell between the cherubim, shine forth. Restore us, O God. Cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. Return, we beseech you, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand. Upon the Son of Man. You may strong for yourself. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, our God, does keep his word. 
Our second candle is called the Bethlehem candle. This candle bids us hear the word of God with penitent and faithful hearts, and so to make ready for the coming of the Lord. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday of Advent is from the fourth chapter of the prophet Malachi. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, and all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly will be stubble, and the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts. That will leave them neither root nor branch, but to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. And you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. You shall trample the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual is from Psalm 50. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God will shine forth. Our God shall come, he shall not keep silent. Gather my saints together to me. Those who have made a covenant with me are sacrifice. Our epistle reading is from the 15th chapter of Paul's letter to the Romans. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we, through the patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another, according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore receive one another, just as Christ also received us, to the glory of God. Now I say that Jesus Christ has become a servant to the circumcision for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made to the fathers, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, For this reason I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Laud him, all peoples. And again Isaiah says, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he shall rise to reign over the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall have hope. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Um. Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. 
Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Then he spoke to them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they are already budding, you see and know for yourselves that summer is now near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares for this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We continue now with sharing our Christian faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed as found on page 158. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We continue now with singing together hymn number 336, Lo, He Comes with Clouds Descending, number 336.
our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for the second Sunday of Advent is our Gospel reading in Luke chapter 21. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they are already budding, you see and know for yourselves that summer is now near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Beware, O daughter of Zion, the fig tree is thick with buds. The nations are perplexed. Men's hearts are failing. There are cowards and sycophants. There are those false preachers who scratch the itchy ears of men. There are those vain liars who hide behind their sophistry and wicked vocabulary calling debauchery and vice victimless. There are those who name babies fetuses or embryos. And the slaughterhouses they refer to as clinics. There are those who pretend as though sodomy is wholesome. There are those petty tyrants who enslave their people and oppress even their friends. And then there are those hypocrites who attempt to use the church for their own gain. They and we will be exposed. We must repent. The kingdom draws near. Your salvation is coming. Beware and rejoice. Last week, in our collect, the prayer, the one prayer that collects the thoughts of the day, hence the name of the collect, we begged our Lord Jesus Christ to stir up his power and come. We ask this because of his enduring promise. Because he has said that he will be our God. He will save us. We want him to fulfill his word. We want him to keep his promise. We want to be Isaac who is set loose from the altar. We want to be Jacob limping away from his wrestling match with God. The deceiver no more, but with a new and noble name. We want to be Joseph's hateful brothers who are rescued from famine and now living in peace with their father and their brother. We want to be Paul, changed from a persecutor to an apostle and a martyr. We do not merely ask for help, for a little something to get us by until we are on our feet again, or even for some small thing to make the holidays a little more special. We are asking for rescue. We are in mortal danger because of our sins. We are surrounded by demonic forces and liars. And we have become cold and tired afraid. Left on our own, we would have no hold. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. Do not leave us alone, for you are our hope, and your word is true. Stir up our hearts, O Lord. That's our prayer for this week. We pray that the power of God in the flesh, the Spirit who proceeds from the Father and the Son, would stir us up. <clears throat> stir up our hearts, O oh Lord, for we are in danger of growing bored and cold. Our flesh is weak. We are tempted to neglect the watch. To indulge our baser desires. To forget who we are and what exactly it is that we're waiting for. We're tempted to pretend that we're too theological to actually care 
about social justice. We need the Lord to stir up our hearts, to rouse us from our selfish slumber, to prepare and make us ready for His coming now in word and in sacrament, for His coming soon in glory. The Spirit stirs us up to repentance. It's like it's like being woke up too early on a dreary December day. We'd rather roll over and bury ourselves in the covers than repent. When we, when they were frozen, our hearts were numb. But as they thaw at the spirit stirring, they shoot needles of pain into our souls. Turning from our sin and towards God is difficult. <laughs> it's painful. Nonetheless, we pray that He would stir us up. For if He does not, if He does not stir us up, if He does not cause repentance to bubble up with us, if He does not bring us from focusing on ourselves and the world around us and instead focus on Him, then we die an eternal death. The Word of God is a sword. It is meant for killing. It cuts us off from our old life. It exposes our shameful weaknesses. We may have fooled men, the people around us. <laughs> we may have even fooled ourselves. But we never fooled God. He saw the things that we did in secret. He heard the black thoughts and depraved fantasies that played out in the back of our minds. Repent. God knows what you've done, what you've dreamed, what you've thought. And yet, despite that, He chooses, He chooses to love you. He became a servant to the circumcision. That's a way of saying that He suffered under the law. The law given through Moses. The law that you and I have failed to keep. He did all that the law of God demanded. He abstained from all that forbade. He then allowed the law to do to him all that it should have done to us. His circumcision has completed circumcision. He has completely filled up the law. Therefore, it can ask no more. There's no one left to accuse you for not keeping the law because it has been kept in perfection. As Jesus says in another parable, friend, go up higher. Take the place of honor. You are the beloved son. You are his chosen virgin bride the object of his desire and the motivation for his sacrifice. He has counted you worthy of the price. The Holy Trinity has given all he is to have you. He gladly paid for you. He does not regret it, not for a second. He loves you. The promise he made to the fathers is that this mercy endures forever. He forgives iniquity. He is gracious and kind. He is the root of Jesse, born of a virgin, crucified and raised again for your justification. He is your hope and your salvation. 
So look up. As the rest of the world casts their gazes down, lift your heads. Your redemption draws near. His word will not pass away. It is true. It is valid. It is certain. It will come to be just as he said it would. And it will never fail. This enduring and gracious word of God made flesh was placed into you in the waters of holy baptism. Water and the name of God called you by his name. A new and noble name. A deceiver and betrayer no more. He made you his. He cannot forget you. You are his bride. God has joined you together. No man can put you asunder. You have left your father the devil and become one flesh with the crucified and risen God of Abraham. Heaven and earth will fail, but his word will not. This is a holy marriage that will not end. It will endure forever. His word abides in you. It lives in you. You eat his body and you drink his blood. His word rings in your ear and is upon your lips. Thus you will not fail. You will not pass away. You will live forever with your God. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all of our human understanding Keep your hearts and minds forever in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue now down at the bottom of page 159 with singing together our offertory, What Shall I Render to the Lord? Please come.
Gracious Father, receive our thanks for your abundance of blessings given within your family to Nancy, Eleanor, Christian, Karina, and all who celebrate birthdays, as well as all those who celebrate anniversaries. Lord, in your mercy, O oh Lord, you know we often use the cares of this life as excuses for dissipation, drunkenness, and other distractions from you and your promises. Guard us from all temptations that would harm our faith and lead us to fear your coming. Preserve us by your grace that we might wait with joy to stand before the Son of Man in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the midst of strife and conflict and wars and rumors of wars, remind us that you have given all authority in heaven and earth to your Son, our ascended Lord. Call to faithfulness the leaders of the earth and bless those who govern. Joseph, our president, Michael, our governor, and Christina, our mayor. Protect all those who defend us and keep them safe. Especially we pray for our local law enforcement and Chad, Barry, William, Douglas, and Craig in our sheriff's office. Toward those who would hinder your reign among all peoples, that peace may be established in all places. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give ear, O Shepherd of Israel, to our prayers, especially do we pray for Jim, Patricia, Mary, Evelyn, and their ongoing needs, for Mark, Barbara, Tony, Mara, and their afflictions, for everyone struggling with the pandemic, and for all those we remember now in our hearts. Give healing, courage, and perseverance to all who cry to you, that they may find comfort in your enduring word and the certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life with Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace in believing. Grant repentance and firm trust to all who commune this day, that receiving your true body and blood they may be forgiven and abound in hope, able to stand with a clean conscience before your judgment throne. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, show the love of your Christ to all troubled consciences. Lift up their heads to see that their redemption is drawing near and bless them through the preaching of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue now on page 160 with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, 
We laud and magnify your glorious name, ever more praising you and say.
Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you singing together our closing hymn, number 349, Heart the Glad Sound, number 349. 